Before I move on to the other side of this uh, part, I want to uh, I want to actually do a little bit of house cleaning and, and, and sort of clean up my file and, and maybe resort some of the operations so that it will cut just a little bit more efficiently. Uh, this is not something you have to follow along with, but I just want to show you what I'm doing. So as I was going, I had my, uh, my layers dialog open here and I was switching between which layer was active and which layer was on throughout the, uh, throughout the time of making this part. And I wasn't really paying attention when I made some of, the, some of the chain features and when I made some of the operations, they were in different layers. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna call it operations. And then I'm going to, uh, so what I've also got on here is my masks. So I've got tool paths and, and operation and features masked here. I'm going to turn everything back on. If I hit stop, now it's going to show all of these things. I really don't want to see the annotations. Those will be in my way while I'm doing this. So I'm going to turn that off in the masks. So again, I've got masks on. I've got the layers dialog open. And what I really want to do now is make sure that I select all of the cutting operations. And I can do that, actually I can do it in the, uh, in the features bar here by selecting this one, press control, select the next one, select this one, and go down through and select. I don't want the feature, just the, uh, just the cutting operation. So I've selected all of the cutting operations there. And down in my, uh, in my properties viewer, I can go to uh, I go to general, and I can specify what layer I want all those things to be on, and I'm going to put them all on that operations layer, and uh, and then if I click anywhere that takes effect, I can go ahead and turn off the operations layer and they all go away turn it back on and they all come back and that's just the visibility of them it doesn't actually delete them or, or even stop them from uh, from becoming code when we create the code just it's a, an easier way to look at it the other thing that I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and select all of the features and so that's this island feature here that defined the uh, the first facing operation I'm going to go ahead and hit, click control, pocket, pocket, chamfer, part boundary, counter bore, here, actually do that. And I'm going to create a new layer there, call it features. Move those all into that features layer. Now this is not something that you need to do, but it helps. Uh, it just helps keep the file organized, especially if you're going to come back to it later. And then uh, while you're working on the part, uh, if you have a feature highlighted, so if I turn off the features layer here, and I'm going to go ahead and then select that part boundary. As soon as I select it in my project manager, I can still see it over here on the part. And it just helps us, especially when you have a, a part that's very busy, has a lot of features and things on it. Um, the other thing that I noticed as I was going along here was I have a geometry tab here, a geometry layer. Let me turn off some of these other layers, a fixture of the part, annotations, features. And so whatever in the layers dialog, whichever one is highlighted is the one that's active. I'm going to go ahead and highlight the, um, the geometry one. And so what I notice now, if I turn my part on, the geometry that, that makes up the, the edges and the boundaries of this part doesn't line up with the part. And that's because when we copied the solid model down, way back in the, the first step there in order to make our facing operation, we only moved the solid body. We didn't move that geometry. And just to fix that and have everything be lined up for me, uh, in the future in case I want to use this again. I'm going to go ahead and select just geometry. So this filter is what we're allowed to select with the, uh, with the mouse. And then I'm going to select everything that's here. So that selected all of that geometry. And I'm going to right click, copy, and translate. Sorry, translate just like we did down 50 thousandths in Z. We want to move that, say OK. And now that geometry is lined back up again with the part. Um, 
Again, it's not something we had to do, it's just something that I wanted to do to make the, uh, the file a little bit neater. Now, if I want to look at the geometry, I can look at only the geometry, I can turn the part off. Uh, geometry lets us do a few different things which we haven't really talked about yet. Uh, but if I go back to my top view, for example, if I, if I wanted to measure the diameter of this, uh, this hole here, I could actually go to a, a dimensioning tool here. I could select dimension, I could select that feature and it will tell us, so it tell us the radius is 1.3. Oh, and it drew that in this geometry layer here, but we can't see it. Um, or we've got annotations turned off. That's why we can't see it. Annotations back on. We can see that 1.3 there. Um, and we can do some other things with that geometry. It also helps us if we're manually creating chains, which we didn't do in this exercise at all. But uh, having geometry points can help us easily manually create chains, can help us create manual point-to-point -point features, those p-top features. Um, so I just wanted to clean those things up before we got going. The other thing I want to do is I want to look at the order of operations because I remember when we watched the, uh, the simulation, if we watch the simulation go all the way through again, uh, we'll see that it, go ahead and stop that. We're going to start from the beginning, slow it down just a little bit. But if we watch that simulation go all the way through again, we see the facing operation comes out with the face mill. That's good. The, uh, the 3 8 inch end mill makes this pocket. Yeah, speed that up just a hair. 3 8 end mill makes this pocket. Makes this pocket. Then the chamfer mill comes out, does the spot drilling. The two drills come out. And then the 3 8 inch end mill comes back again. And so each one of those tool changes takes time. And if we can align all of the operations so that each tool only gets changed out once, that will actually make the part cut faster. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. Go to my operations tab. And um, if I expand that just a little bit here, we can see that, all right, so the first thing that happens is the facing. The face mill only operates once, and we, and we need to have that operation go first. The next thing we do is we have that 3 8 end mill do the through pocket and the pocket. Now, there's no reason that we can't do the contour right then when we do that through pocket and the pocket. So I'm going to select the contouring operation. I'm going to drag it up so that it goes after that pocketing operation. And so now the 3 8 end mill only needs to come out one time. The next thing is, and once that contouring operation is done, we can do the chamfering operation. So I'm gonna take the chamfering operation here, solid mill contouring for the chamfer mill, and I'm gonna drag that up to uh, just after the, the other contouring operation. So then, the face mill goes, the 3 8 end mill goes. Next, um, we can spot drill both of those p-tops. So the spot here and the spot here, we can avoid a tool change by dragging this one up and putting it there. Now, the number seven drill just makes one hole. The, uh, the spiral flute tap just makes one hole. The F drill just makes one hole. And the quarter inch end mill just does one operation. So it really doesn't matter what order we do those, but this will tend to speed up that, uh, that operation. And actually, if you select all of those operations, Esprit will give you an idea of total cycle time, how long it's gonna take to do that cutting operation. And so this will take about four minutes to do this side of this part. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run that simulation all the way through one more time, just to show that it doesn't keep changing back and forth and then we're going to actually get ready to um, to actually flip the part over so that we can start cutting on the other side if we want to so get this going here I stop that and close the masks and so this is just about finished we'll speed it all the way up and so again, this side is finished and now we didn't waste a lot of time by switching tools back and forth as we're going through there. Uh, before I close this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna save stock to file. We're gonna cover this in a future lesson, but I just wanted to go through it now. Save stock to file. And it creates an STL file. I'm gonna call mine side one finish and I'm just gonna save it in the working directory that I've been working with here. Yes, I do wanna replace that one. And, and the other thing, of course, is you're going to want to do file, 
save as and make sure that you save this uh, I've saved mine here getting started with cam chapter 4 I actually made one for each of the um, each of the operations here you don't need to do that but you certainly want to have one that is uh, is your side one finished and go ahead and save that into your working directory also and yes I'll replace that all right